Yes, it is class number three on thermodynamics, higher secondary first year, and it is continuation of class number two. If you do not have the concept which I have explained in class number two, it will be a bit difficult for you to understand class number three because there will be again system surrounding like this. So, specially, I will today discuss first law of thermodynamics. My focus is first law of thermodynamics. So, to understand first law of thermodynamics, we need to know the three quantities very meticulously. So, one is internal energy. In your book, at present, it is given U. And I have given E. All the same, you replace E by U. Internal energy, heat content, W. So, let us first explain what is internal energy. So, at the very beginning, I have just given you the definition of internal energy in a very shortcut way. It is a very big concept. So, every system, in the last class, I told you, uh, system is a part which is of universe which is under consideration or experimentation. Say a cup of hot cup of tea is a system which is a part of so. So, if you assume a part of the universe, a hot cup of tea is a system. So, like this, each and every system of this universe is having some matter. In the cup of tea, it is hot tea. Hot tea is matter. Is a matter which is associated with amount of energy, some amount of energy, and that energy is internal energy. So internal energy E or U so in general it is a very simple term but in definition while you want to give you the definition on a mathematical explanation it gives you a huge view so the view is that if a system is having some material and this material is associated with some kind of energy and the this energy is called internal energy say a system in any system if you increase in a system if there is gas molecules so gas molecules are in random motion during the random motion it will have it will get kinetic energy and during kinetic energy go ups downs due to its position it gets potential energy so one gas molecule just collide with the other so some amount of the velocity or momentum is transferred to the other one and its velocity and momentum is reduced so there is transition of energy and sometimes the gas molecules are very tiniest particles they vibrate during its motion there is vibration energy they starts rotating from one place to another there is rotation energy so in the system if it is consist of gas or other material so there is transition energy vibration energy bonding also electrons also move electrons and ener electronics energy kinetic energy potential energy sum total of all these types of energy is called e or internal energy So two very important things I have here mentioned is that it is an extensive property and it is a state, a state function. I have already mentioned in the lecture class what is extensive and what is intensive property. It depends on the material present in the system. The property which depends upon the amount of material whose value depends upon the amount of material present in the system is called extensive property. So internal energy is the extens extensive property and it is a state function because uh, uh, a system, a system, a gas molecule confined, confined in this one. If you just import some amount of heat to it, so there is uh, the um, gas molecule starts moves with vigorous velocity, and there is vibration, rotation, kinetic energy, potential. Each everything it transforms. So if the volume now changes this to this, so it is one system. This is another system. So this change of volumes, sorry. If in the temperature T1 and its temperature T2, say its internal energy is E1 and E2. So the internal energy, one is E1, the initial and internal energy is another is final, then uh, change in internal energy is equal to E1, E2 is equal to del E. That is state 1 to state 2. So internal energy depends upon how it reaches 
it doesn't matter but what is initial and what is final hence internal energy is a state function let me thanks for mention so let us define what is heat content means q and what is what so we have already defined internal energy now uh, let us define what is heat content q and what is what the energy of a system set up of t energy of a system may increase or decrease it is known to you you can increase the energy of the system so you can decrease the energy of the systems and the energy of systems may increase or decrease and this increase and, de uh, and decrease may be taken place in different manner different way different parts but here the two common path the two common ways in which the intern is the energy of a system may increase or decrease here specifically we will pointed out we will uh, pinpoint upon heat content or heat and work so the system's energy can be increased with the exchange of heat or may increase by work done on the system or work done by the system you will a bit later you will get on the system by the system so by two ways we can increase or decrease the internal ener sorry energy of a system uh, out of the lot of ways these two ways common ways are heat and work now what is heat in a very simple way in a very simple way let me define what is heat now what is heat heat is nothing but a form of energy heat is a form of energy and now this heat can transfer it can flow from one system to another and this flow of heat from one system to another is only possible one there is a difference between temperature between these two system when there is a difference between temperature when there is high and low temperature there is a difference in temperature in two systems then heat can be shifted to one system to the another this is heat so what is work and this is the way by transforming or flowing heat from one system to another because of temperature differences so one system may get higher energy another system may get lower energy so heat is a way with the help of which we can increase or decrease the energy of a system now how work is a system how work is a way another way to increase or decrease the energy of a system now let us define what is work so now let us define work you have got it in different way different uh, physics also in chemistry everywhere you got this idea of work what is work work is nothing but work is said to be done if the point of application of force is displaced along the direction of the force applied in which direction you have applied a force upon a body and if this body dis displaces to the direction of impressed force then it is called work so work is equal to force into displacement it is a mechanical work which is observable and if work is done with potential difference in q it is electrical work so uh, this is not mandatory just uh, um, as a associated term i have just defined what is vq vq is electrical work and w is equal to f into v is a mechanical work so you know the unit of si unit of work is the joule and uh, work unit of work um, uh, energy is also joule so we can say energy one kilo calorie is equal to 4.189 joule and one joule equal to one newton meter and one arc equal to 10 to the 7 arc we have got it in the 
lower classes. So from this, we can uh, um, um, infer that one calorie is greater than one joule is greater than one R. So we have defined internal energy, Q, heat, heat content and work. To define first law of thermodynamics, our today's target. <coughs> now forget about internal energy. What is energy actually? It is the ability to So now what is energy? Actually internal energy I have already defined. Now what actually energy is? Energy is nothing but ability or cap capacity. Capacity to do what is called energy. Now there are different types of energy already I have mentioned it. So especially there are two types of energy. I will define a bit also you, have, you will get in different separate kinetic energy. Very simple, nothing critical. So kinetic energy is nothing but energy which is posited or which is associated with the motion of a particle is called kinetic energy. And uh, potential energy, it is uh, possessed by uh, a body may possess potential energy by virtue of its position. If there is any height, so you will write mgh, kinetic energy is the velocity half mv square. Am I right? So potential energy is posited of, by, uh, of a particle is posited by virtue of its position of height and the kinetic energy is uh, due to the uh, velocity or motion of a particle. This convention is a bit important very important you should keep it in your mind so heat and w, w q and w we have already defined defined so what is heat sign convention if it is absorbed by the system if heat is absorbed by the system it is assumed to be plus q and if heat is emitted <coughs> sorry uh, by the system or evolved out from the system it is minus q likewise if work is done on the system it is q and if work is done by the system it is minus w how, how what is work is done by the system if you give some heat to the system then it is plus q and if the system emits out some amount of heat it is minus q if so there is, is a system uh, a piston freely movable piston is there am i right so with the help of this if you apply pressure upon this then volume is if, if, if it is volume v1 upon application of this if piston comes to this place then volume of this part is equal to v2 volume changes so you have done some work upon the system work has been done on the system now the, uh, the opposite thing uh, is if really piston is there at this gas ball closer then if you supply some amount of it to the systems then this is the initial volume v1 upon application of heat the volume say piston has gone to this place to this place it has gone to this place now volume is v2 now what's happened the what you have not applied any pressure upon the system to reduce the volume but uh, upon the uh, upon the change in the kind of heat content of the system uh, what happens the volume changes so work 
done by the system and work sorry work is done on the system is w and work has done by the system itself has done this work it is minus q if it is by the system minus w and if it is work on the system plus w So now let me come to first law of thermodynamics which is also termed as uh, law of conservation of energy. Again this term is known to you. Energy cannot be created nor be destroyed but can be transformed from one state to another. It is first law of thermodynamics. A lot of other definitions are there. <coughs> Just I have put this definition for your clear understanding and I think there uh, is uh, no mass things to describe in it it is known to you but how in mathematical form i can say that internal energy of a system is e1 at the initial state and finally this internal energy has changed to e2 then this change of internal energy is delhi so delhi is equal to e2 minus e1 because it is a state function at the very beginning i explained now how can i relate that energy earlier i told you at the very beginning i will define three term one is e other is q and w i have not effaced it out to make it clear why i mentioned this one because this will come in need in explanation of the first law of thermodynamics because when there is change in energy i told you energy can be changed a system's energy may be increased may be decreased in different ways and one of the very important or two common ways of change in energy of a system is one is Q heat and other is work. So here there is change of energy occurs and this change of energy is due to the heat. Either we have supplied or it has emitted out. When heat is emitted out, heat is emitted out or heat is supplied to the system, some amount of work will be done on the system or by the system. Am I right? So if we Thus, change in work, change in internal energy E2 minus E1 is due to heat and consequence upon the heat on the system, the work has been done is Q plus W. But if a system does work on the surrounding, if system does, I have already defined system and surrounding, cup of tea is a system and a, a boundary of the cup of outside of the boundary is surrounding system plus surrounding is inverse. So, if heat energy is exchanged to the surrounding, if some amount of work is done to the surrounding, naturally the heat of the system will decrease and this decrease of heat, heat uh, sorry, the system will have less energy when it is exchanged some energy from system to surrounding, system itself will less energy and if you maintain this energy is less than that we have supplied it, heat is being exchanged either absorbed or emitting out but the work when system is, uh, if you want to maintain less energy daily, so we should make W minus. So work has done by the system, it has been released to the surrounding. So the relation del E is equal to Q plus W will be written or may be written as del E equal to Q minus W and this is nothing but mathematical formulation of first law of thermodynamics which is correlated with change in energy in terms of heat and work.
Now, it is a very important relationship and very often asked in board exam and also a lot of questions uh, for entrance exam is probable from this part. I have just introduced a new term enthalpy. Now, what is enthalpy? Uh, let me first tell that it is designated as H. Again, it is a state function H1 and H2. So, H2 minus H1 del H. Am I right? So, let me define enthalpy. Now we have seen enthalpy and heat more or less they are relating. So what I define here is heat content of a system at constant pressure. A term pressure has been introduced to define enthalpy. Means it is heat. Heat is nothing but a form of energy which, is, which can flow from one system to another due to the difference of energy between the two systems. This is heat. Am I right? So heat is this. If this is heat content. And if this cont cont heat content is obtained at constant pressure, means as heat content of a system is at constant pressure is nothing but H enthalpy. In chemical reaction, enthalpy of a reaction means change of the heat evolved during the reaction from the reactant side and heat uh, evolved at the time of the formation means heat of the product and heat of the reactant. So if you make the change that is enthalpy, this is in chemical reaction. But in terms of uh, system, in terms of thermodynamics, in thermodynamics, the heat content of a system at constant pressure is called enthalpy means if it is a system and if you keep the pressure as, as it is same in different heat content heat q1 q2 q3 at constant pressure then this heat content at constant pressure is termed as enthalpy enthalpy of the system now why we have uh, taken this term enthalpy because we are to now deduce some relation in terms of in between enthalpy and enthalpy change. Now, what is first law? First law is equal to Q is equal to uh, del E plus W. And one thing you keep it in mind, a bit later I will define it. Uh, w is equal to actually P del V. Change in volume at constant pressure, at constant pressure, constant term always comes out. Constant pressure is equal to P del V. So, we can write if you if you make the change uh, change of system keeping changing the system keeping pressure constant. If Q is equal to del U by Q from first law of thermodynamics if the system changes keeping pressure constant. So, what you are getting Q at constant pressure is equal to daily plus work equal to pb and if work volume changes so this changed volume is b1 b2 this change has been done under constant pressure since the system is changed keeping pressure constant then this work is nothing but p into del b am i right so here this change at constant qp it is enthalpy since we are changing enthalpy is a state function at one temperature it is h1 in other condition it is h2 that this change of enthalpy of these two system is equal to del h and this change of enthalpy is done at constant heat qp at sorry at constant pressure heat content at constant pressure that is nothing but enthalpy and since system is changed so there is change in the enthalpy so we have got del e is equal to del h is equal to del e into p del v mind that where 
I am not writing del H is equal to change in enthalpy of the system or change in enthalpy in case of reaction where pressure is constant. Change in enthalpy, change in enthalpy at constant pressure and this is work done at constant pressure and this is internal energy at constant volume mind that this is at constant volume we keep it in your mind enthalpy is always at constant pressure and work done is here at constant pressure as parabar assumption and del e is or u for your book uh, del u it is at constant volume so we have got we have got we have got del h is equal to del e plus p del v each term i have defined now for for gas for liquid or solid there is no appreciable change in the volume occurs the term p del v is equal to zero that is for gases del h is equal to del e plus p del v and for liquid and solid it is del h is equal to del e where p del v is equal to zero so we are not concerned with this just for your understanding i have told if it is liquid and solid not solution liquid and solid if it is liquid and solid then p del v becomes zero because there is no appreciable change in solid and volume uh, with change in enthalpy so this part no need to write for understanding i have just written our main purpose is to write the relation del h is equal to del e plus p del v now we know we know pb is equal to nrt from ideal gas equation if you take two system uh, a system at it is b1 and number of mole is equal to n1 uh, at constant pressure the change in volume is equal to b1 and for second system the change in volume is equal to n2 am i right so for two system at constant pressure one is b1 and b2 and the number of mole is n1 and n2 r and t gas constant and temperature is remain constant so for these two change if you make the difference pb2 minus pb1 n2 rt minus n1 rt so from this you take constant b2 minus b1 is equal to n2 minus n1 rt am i right from this you will get p del v is equal to del n rt so here we can put del h is equal to del e plus del n rt using gas law ideal gas equation sometimes in exam you are asked to write this expression and sometimes you are asked del e is equal to del h is equal to del e plus t del n rt at the fag end of the class uh, let me mention one of the important term zeroth law of thermodynamics it is not in your course zeroth law of It is a very important term you will get it in second year and it will be helpful for solving out a different type of critical question in entrance exam that's why at the fag end of the class just i am mentioning though it is not mentioned in the syllabus of your course uh, but it is very important zero law of thermodynamics with the help of which the kelvin scale has been uh, prepared so zero law of thermodynamics it is if you assume two systems a a a, a and c and if two system a system a is equilibrium with system c and if you assume another system b again this system b is again equilibrium with the system c 
So both the system A and B are equilibrium with the C, then automatically system A and B are in equilibrium. This is called zeroth law of thermodynamics. Uh, thanks a lot for watching the class. Hope you have find the class more interesting and please don't forget to subscribe the class, class uh, to get updated information in the next class.